JT Masit with Cara Remix Concrete Association or CRMCA. I'm here to talk about the procedures involved in the Concrete Field Testing Technician Grade 1 certification for ACI. We're going to go over concrete cylinders for testing. In order to do that, we need to make sure that we are casting them and curing them properly and consistently. ASTM C31 is the standard for making and curing concrete test specimens in the field. We'll go over the procedures for size 4x8 cylinders. If you want to follow along for the 6x12 cylinders, they will be noted throughout the video. Oh, and this procedure is going to take a lot longer to go through than when it actually is performed. Make sure you have the proper sized rod and scoop for the mold you will be filling. For a 4x8 sized cylinder, a 3 8 inch tamping rod is used. As always, let me remind you that as I lead a lot of ACI certifications here in Colorado, I get asked the question about which videos or trainings should somebody use, and understand these videos do not replace a certification training that a company might lead, but they are very useful tools. So with that, understand these videos should be up to date, so check this one too. The 4x8 cylinder mold will be filled in two layers of equal volume. For the first lift, fill the 4x8 sized mold halfway full. Rod the first layer 25 times uniformly across the cross section. Rod the full depth of the lift without damaging the bottom of the cylinder mold. This means you still tap the bottom, but not strike it hard. Then tap the sides of the mold smartly 10 to 15 times with a mallet to close the rotting holes and release the trapped air pockets. Make sure to tap along all sides of the mold, not just in one place. In Colorado, all of the molds being used for cylinders are made out of hard plastic, so make sure you're using a mallet. They are not susceptible to denting or damage. For the second layer, repeat the process by filling concrete to the top of the mold. Rod the layer 25 times uniformly again, penetrating about one inch into the first layer. If the concrete level is too low during rotting of the top layer, adjust before finishing consolidation. Tap the sides of the mold 10 to 15 times with a mallet. This again means all sides, not just one side of the mold. Strike off the surface of the mold using a hand float, trowel, or the tamping rod. I personally prefer a wood or magnesium hand float. The tamping rod is appropriate for a high slump concrete. Make sure to produce a flat surface, level with the rim that has no depressions or projections larger than 1 8 of an inch. Provide protection to prevent moisture loss, using the provided lid or other material if not available. After finishing the cylinder, mark the specimen to identify the concrete it represents. It's more practical and ideal to mark the mold before beginning the filling process, and this is acceptable. Move the specimen to the initial curing location. Ideally, testing and casting should occur as close to the initial curing location on site. Lastly, I want to briefly discuss initial curing. Not just in Colorado, but across the US and the world, we all see discrepancies in initial curing. To be blunt, it's not always done correctly. Casting cylinders and initial curing is a very important part of the concrete testing procedures because they affect the strength results of the project. References such as ACI 301, ACI 311.6, and ACI 318 discuss proper curing environment and temperature monitoring in more detail, as well as require specimens be cured in accordance with ASTM C31. It is highly recommended to discuss the on-site initial curing facilities with your client, the owner, and contractor to coordinate responsibilities. The best time to discuss this is at the pre-construction or pre-pour meetings, or both to emphasize the importance of initial curing of specimens, when acceptance is based on the strength results of the specimens cast on site. Do this as early as possible in the project planning for success. If you have any questions, please do email us at aci at coloradocaa.org and we will do our damnedest to try to help you out.